used to do with my papa. All right, Jordan, thank you very much for that introduction. Here's the deal with Danny Sitters. I'm Jeff Adair, and Danny, how are you doing today? I'm well, ready for another podcast. And this is episode seven. This is amazing. Here we episode are. Episode seven. I think this might be a lively discussion today. Well, I'm gonna. I'm looking forward to it. You know, with, with Easter on Sunday, that uh, was a great sermon, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank I you. love um, how you got Jonah's prayer in there. I was <laughs> sitting there like, I did not expect to hear Jonah's <laughs> yeah. prayer on Easter Sunday. You know, you got to throw things in to keep people's attention That's span, right. you know, uh, going. You, you got to, you got to, you got to at least have them expect that there might be some major surprise. So, yeah. How about a prayer? Prayer from the bottom of the ocean in the belly of a whale on Easter Sunday. Yeah, that was great. I loved it. <laughs> uh, and, the, and the picture you had, I'm sure you had to go do, do some digging on to find a, a, a good picture for Jonah and the whale. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, kids' pictures, I bet. <laughs> I got to tell you, I almost put one up as a joke, and it was it really was on online. It was a picture of Jonah up to his waist in water sitting at a desk and writing the, 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 the book of Jonah. <laughs> With a with a lamp, <laughs> I thought. Now this is one way. This might have been one of the ways it happened. Who That's knows? Right. But yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I couldn't get a real photo. I yeah. mean, you just had to be a couldn't get one. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll have to do some more digging on that. I have to get some more resources for you on yeah. that one. So uh, we haven't had any questions yet on the sermon. I think everybody was still kind of processing, but I did hear a lot of uh, good feedback afterwards. So good. That's good to hear. Um, so I want to start off with a question that you brought up in your sermon: Our religious worldview kept the disciples and us from getting what Jesus was all about. So what exactly were you were you meaning by that? Right. So when you go through the Gospels, and, and, you know, here at Heartland not long ago, we went through the entire Gospel of Mark. Yes. And three or four times Jesus specifically said, this is what is going to happen to me. We're going to Jerusalem. I'm going to be persecuted, suffer. Um, killed, and then rise again. And each time the disciples either tried to rebuke him like Peter did and said, oh, 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 no, that's not going to happen. Guarantee you that won't happen. We'll stand up for you, fight, you know, for you. Or they would just kind of, you know, kind of look at him like my dog used to do when I make a funny sound. They just kind of <laughs> just kind of cock their head like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. By the way, who's the greatest in the kingdom, Jesus? Oh, yeah. Which one of us is the greatest? Hey, can we sit on your right hand and your left hand in the in your glory? Uh, they just didn't get it. Now, these are um, folks who would have had an idea if not a a good idea about Messiah, heard it from the time they were little, read scripture about it, Um, you know. Now, now, now different disciples had different level of education and training and and being familiar with with Jewish um, history and culture and scripture. But they would have known these stories. And so they, over time, I think at least began to say, okay, there's something different about this guy. Yeah. He's he's different. Look at what he's doing. If nothing else, we get free food and watch, you know, people rise from the dead. I mean, at least it's entertaining. Oh, so yeah, we got a show. Yeah. So, um, but they never could understand what he's really about, what he's trying to do. So, again, their religious, even um, scriptural, um, biases, biases, or however you say the word, uh, 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 that, that, that kept them from believing was that Jesus, that Messiah was going to be again this militaristic Messiah who was going to overthrow, you know, let's say at that time Rome, and um, defeat the enemies and, and put, and put um, Israel back on the throne. And so Messiah would reign from the throne in Jerusalem over the entire world. He was going to conquer the world. So they missed it in that that is exactly what Jesus came to do, to conquer the world, to overthrow this world. Just not with, you know, sticks and stones and rocks and, and, and guns and you know, the cavalry, he came to overthrow this world by changing hearts. Mm. That's hard. Yeah. I, 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 I give them all kinds of grace. That's, that's hard for us, even today, reading the stories. We still have ideas about 
who Jesus is, what he's about, what does he mean to my life? Because we have religious connotations that run through our head, right? So again, and, and, and I've said this several times, religion is more about how can I live in such a way to keep God off my back? Yeah. God is the, you know, the um, credit report manager. He's uh, he's keeping score on us. Hey, you need to get that score up. Yeah. You're not, you know. So so and religion then is about again morality. Don't do these things. Right. Make make sure you don't do those things. That'll that'll disqualify disqualify you. Make sure you do enough of these good things. You know. Again, it's a it's a um, it's a scale. It's a pendulum. I just gotta have enough more good so that I don't end up again burning. In hell, burning. Right. I don't. You know, like I said that Sunday. I don't, I don't like fire. I don't like fire. I, I, don't, I don't like opening the oven door. You know, the heat comes out and hits you in the face. I don't want any part of that. Yeah. So I got to make sure I don't do enough good. Get that fifty-one percent over that forty-nine. That's, that's right. Yeah, you just got to tilt it just a little bit, just enough, so we, so we, you know, eke into into heaven mm. or into eternity. Oh, there you go. Um, so yeah, they they had these misgivings, these these misconceptions, and and what's What's really interesting for for in, in 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 human nature is what we believe is what we see. Oh, yeah. Well, think about it. What they believed trumped what they saw That's in true. Jesus. They had these notions. They had these um, ideas. They had these beliefs. They, they, they even had some scripture that you could go to in the Jewish scriptures to look at it and point to it. It just wasn't. It just wasn't the mission of Jesus that they had in their mind that they saw have coming down. Wow. So when we have our view of Jesus, and when we read our scriptures, and we have we spend time in community, and we have our view of Jesus, and, we, and of course we have that from growing up. How can we take that, and how do we? So what else do we need to do, basically, is what I'm saying? What else do we need to do in order to, when we have that view of Jesus, when we need to align it with God's? Typically, what happens, and this and, and this was my story and, and, and a lot of believers' story, is as a child, you grow up hearing the stories in class or you watch videos or Veggie Tales or hey, there you go. things like that, and, and you get familiar with the stories. As you become an adult... It's like the focus shifts to the letters that Paul wrote. Okay. In other words, how do I respond to the life, the mission, the message of Jesus? Right. Okay. And, and so it's, it's been interesting. It's just kind of a side note that the book of James has kind of been our favorite book that is always taught. You know, at one time at a church where, where I was the minister, we had uh, two Bible classes, two adult Bible classes. We let the teachers pick the topic, and both of them were teaching the book of James. You know, <laughs> okay. this, these very uh, practical ideas of, of how to live life. So to answer your question, how do I, how do I begin to change my perception of who Jesus is? It's only going to be found in the Gospels. Yeah. To take a look at his stories. Now, what what is important as you study the stories, there has to be, I believe, some resources that you and I can go to to, to look up, like the fig tree in the story of Zacchaeus. Yeah, something go. that will give us insight, something that the the ancient Jew would be quite familiar with. And, and, and so the writer's not going to say, well, you know what? Those uh, those Americans in the 21st century, let me explain this to them because they're not going to have a clue. Yeah. No, they, they weren't writing for us. Um, they had a different audience in mind. And so I think it's important to have some some resource or two that uh, we could go to to, to maybe um, highlight the story or enlighten the story there for us know. to pick up on these things. But watch how Jesus treated outcasts. Watch how Jesus was invested in community. Watch how Jesus also um, had, again, his harshest words for religious people mm, yeah. during his time. So it's, it's a matter of going back and, 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 and reading and watching and listening Jesus, to Jesus in the Gospels and just starting to get a new idea, getting a new picture of of who Jesus is and what he was really about. Well, you know, 
the easiest way I would think to get a new, a good, easy new picture would be to die to yourself and you're die to your own vision of what you have as Jesus. So great segue, by the way, yeah, thank that, you. great job into what we talked about Sunday. So Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the most incredible mind boggling event in the history of humanity, yes. that Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and came back to life. And people saw him, yeah. people talked to him. Right? And, 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 and all of the, 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 the power and the freedom that comes from the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That, that, that we are free from now sin. We're free from uh, death. Yeah. We have freedom from death. We don't fear death any longer. Right. Uh, it, it, it is freedom of, from the fear of life, living life here on earth, of making mistakes, failing, yeah. stumbling, all of that. We, we've been set free, right? Incredible life. But how do I experience that? Okay. It's one thing to read about it. Yeah, true. It's one thing to look at it and go, well, now, you know, here's what Jesus did when he came back alive. He just walked through walls. And that tells us that Jesus, you know, can walk through walls. Well, that's wonderful. But what do I do with that today in yeah. the world that I'm living in and all of the fast-paced uh, world and the, and the challenges that I have and and, and, you know, again, how does that make a difference uh, in my life? So that's where I really wanted to spend time focusing the sermon on. How, how did the disciples do a 180 yeah. in, in their lives? Because, again, they didn't get it. But you read them in the book of Acts and, and Paul's letters and Peter later on. Uh, they got it. They yeah. changed. Oh, yeah. What happened? So there's the verse, I believe it's in Mark where the uh, women encounter the man dressed in white. You know, was it an angel? Was oh, it yeah. uh, Liberace? I mean, right. we, we don't know. We don't know, yeah. <laughs> For those of you who are under 30, Liberace was a yeah. piano player that spent most of his time um, um, playing in uh, Las Vegas. Anyway. With lots of jewelry. Yeah, oh yeah, lots of jewelry. <laughs> Uh, what are we talking about? Right? So, yeah, we were talking about the lady in the, uh, the <laughs> oh, ladies at the tomb. <laughs> so... And they, and they encounter this man dressed in white and says, you're looking for Jesus the Nazarene. Well, he, he is risen. Yeah, he's not here. And go tell his disciples and Peter that um, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will find him just as he told you. Hmm. Right. Now, again, we might not pick up on the significance of that. Yeah. But I think it's a um, it's a way of saying, tell the disciples you blew it the first time, <laughs> right? Because again, Galilee is where it all started. It's where right. Jesus is from. It's where he called the disciples. It's where he um, did a lot of his miracles. Uh, spent a lot of time in Galilee. By the way, again, Galilee is a was considered a lower class um, a culture of Jews. Um, they were they, they, they tended to be a, a, a little a little aggressive when it comes to uh, uh, political and, and military you know things that they participated in. Okay, uh, it, it was not the elite of the elite. It's it's just a kind of a, they are looked upon as kind of a, a half breed Jew, kind of like the Samaritans. Maybe they were a step or two above Samaritans, but they okay. weren't much further above uh, in the hierarchy of of, of Jewish you know status yeah. stature go back to galilee there you will find him i think mark is saying something to us you're yeah. going to find it because now they're going to encounter the resurrected jesus they thought he was gone yeah they thought okay we had a good run now it's over let's go fishing you're going to encounter him and just like he told you so they they they, they find him in galilee Right? They have to start over. Yeah. And, and that, I think, is when things began to click for them. He gave up his life on purpose, came back to life, and is still calling us on the same mission that before we didn't get it. Yeah. You know, we had our swords in our pockets ready to go. And, and now he's saying, no, your, your, your weapon of choice is 
love for the other, mm. turning this world right side up. So, yeah, I think to understand resurrection life and resurrection power means getting back to Galilee. And, and from there, now you will read, Paul will write a lot about this. Peter writes a lot about this. Um, that in order to experience resurrected life of Jesus means that I have to die to myself. I got to do it again, as the song says, surrender it all. I've got to lay it all down. Because even as believers, we have this tendency to want to add Jesus and resurrected life on top of everything else that we're doing and everything else that we already are and everything that else that we already believe. Yeah. Let's just add another layer here. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. You came along now to save me, you know, from my sin. And I, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll even try harder to, to um, have good behavior and avoid bad behavior. I'll go to church, you know, read my Bible, I'll say a prayer before we eat a meal. Right. You know, all of those externals. We, 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 we have a tendency to want to just add that on top. You know, I remember again, um, I was so proud as a child that I had a Bible full of gold stars in it. Well, you got that because you didn't miss a Bible class on Sunday morning. I was there every week. Of course, I had to be. I was a preacher's kid. <laughs> and uh, so, but man, I had a Bible full of gold stars. And I thought I was so somebody because I, hey, I mean, I'm talking about a child. I'm telling people, hey, I got gold stars. I didn't miss Bible class. That's I'm, right. I'm better than you. I'm doing good things here. Uh, but what I think Jesus was teaching and the writers of, of New Testament Scripture are saying is there's really only one way to access the power and the freedom of the resurrected life. When you give it all up. Yeah. You give up everything. You know, when we're young, again, we want to we, we, we want to follow the success formula. Life is all about success. Get a good education. Yeah. You know, get a, get a good higher education quality. Um, get a good job. Save for retirement. Right? Nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Um, make sure that you're patriotic. Um, love apple pie. Love mom, apple pie, and baseball. Hey, and, yeah. You know, uh, if you do those things, then, you know, you're successful. But I will tell you that, and I'm already, and I've been feeling this for some time. At some point, things begin to change from, in in our worldview, from being successful to leaving a legacy. Yeah, I think Jesus understood leaving a legacy from the very beginning. That was what it was all about: yeah. leaving a legacy for others to follow, making this world a better place. What what kind of place are we leaving? Yeah. Af after we're here. So yeah, it means it means. It, 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 I, I think dying to self, man, it's so challenging. And I said this in the sermon, death is painful. Don't try to skirt around that issue. Right. Death brings tears. It brings pain, heartache, change. I mean, yeah. things change. When someone dies, we're forced into a more transition than change. Change yeah. is an immediate thing. Transition is that fluid period that we go through. Death is painful. Yeah. So to die to self means I have to look at every dimension of my life, every part of my life. What do I believe? How do I live? What's important to me? What are my fears? You know, what are my failures? What is my story that I tell myself about where I've been, where I've come from, where I'm going? Mm. What is my future? Right. So it's it's painful. Don't, don't think that it's not. Yeah. Don't, don't think that I'm um, dying to self. You know? so, so we come to Jesus as, as hopeless sinners, and we receive the gift of salvation. We don't earn it. We're, we're given the gift. Now are you going to die to yourself? See, that death in salvation is just the, the, the initial step. I die to myself in baptism. I'm buried with Christ. I'm raised to live a new life. Guess what? Welcome to kindergarten. Yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly think about right. welcome to kindergarten. Yeah. You know, we're sitting in these little desks and we have crayons. Jesus is saying, now I want you to be a full grown spiritual adult. And we've got years of education and years of dying to self. And and again, dying to self is a is an ongoing process. It's, it's not a one time deal. But again, don't don't think that it's not painful. 
it is incredibly painful. But the reason we do it is because of the undescribable life that is available in going through the process. Yeah. It makes me think of you saying that's not a it's an ongoing process. You don't do it more you do it more than once. You know, Jesus talking to Nicodemus at night. Nicodemus is like, Hey, you know, how do you be reborn? You know, it's it's how old I can only imagine how old Nicodemus was. I know it doesn't right. tell us that, but right. I'm sure Right. What are you talking about, Jesus? I don't even understand what you're talking yeah. about. You know, I'm 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 somebody who's has has religious status in this world and I'm coming to you and you're saying things that make absolutely no sense yeah. to me. What be born again? Yeah, and Paul's uh, scales falling off his eyes too. That just—that's when we were just in there talking. That's what made me think of that. Is his scales falling off because when you do die to yourself, it's like you have old eyes. And I think it was in our first episode I talked about when I was a drug addict. You know, the colors are are muted and dull, but when you give your life and you're not doing that anymore, it's like the blues are a little bit brighter and everything else right. is a little bit different. Right. So one phrase that is um, that I read years ago is that Jesus came. And gave his life so that you and I could become fully human. Mm. Become fully human. What to the fullest of extent of what it means to be a human being, made in the image of God, right. saved by the the grace of Jesus Christ. Now become fully human. Everything that is possible. Well, how many how many folks? Um, move in that direction it's possible yeah. it's absolutely possible but we get caught up with sin and fear and hiding and misconceptions about things and yeah. failure and we just stop we, we, we just stop I, I heard a statistic years ago that most people after graduating college never read another book the rest of their life wow you know, because they were forced to all this time. Yeah, for you know? 16 years. Yeah, see, I'm done with that. I, well, the, the, the information of, in, in the world is, is in our pockets now with, with our cell phones. But uh, because of what happens in life and the challenges we have, uh, some of us stop, stop growing and think, is there any, is there any hope for me? And, and I, want, I want you to hear that there is incredible hope. There's a life available. Now, so let me also say this. I'm a firm believer that it takes a community to experience everything that Jesus has for us. Right. Yes. So he comes to earth. What does he do? Starts getting his community right. together. Oh, yeah. One of the first things, calling his disciples. I want you to become fisher, fishers of men. It's hard. It's really a challenge to do it by yourself if it's even possible. Right. I'll say, I don't even know if it's, that's possible. It is absolutely not only possible, it, it will happen in community. Yeah. That we have like-minded folks who are, who are in the process of dying to themselves, to experiencing the resurrected life and power of Jesus. And we encourage and we love each other and we're involved in each other's lives, spurring one another on when we need to. Uh, I, I think it takes a community uh, of people. That, that we meet with, that we spend time with, that we, you know, laugh with. But we just do life together in this journey of becoming fully human, experiencing the resurrection power of Jesus. As we begin to think about that, I wanted to bring up something you had talked about in your sermon again. You said in, in Luke twenty four twenty one that we, they had hoped for. You know, we had hoped that Jesus would have done this. So in order to get our scales off dying to ourselves— is part of that Jesus that we had hoped for in our lives? Do we need to? Do, does that need to die as well? Yes. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> so the two men on the road to Emmaus after the resurrection of Jesus were talking to each other. Jesus sneaks up behind them. They don't recognize him. And uh, one of the comments that they made, you know, they were like, "Jesus, you haven't heard about?" You know, they they didn't know he was Jesus. You yeah. haven't heard what everybody's talking about. Where have you been? You know. He said, we had hoped that this man, this Jesus, would redeem Israel. Hmm. Again, think about the statement. Yeah. He did. It's exactly what he did. But man, we had just hoped that he, he would have done it. 
the way, the way that, that we believed our idea about how Messiah was going. We, boy, we just we had we had great hopes in him that he would come in here and legislate, you know, morality and politics, and and uh, he would he would grab Rome by the throat, and so that you know we could all live happily ever after. We had hoped, man, what a you know. So you got to laugh at that statement when yes. you read it. Yes. And then you have to look at yourself and go, how many times am I saying that? Yeah. Boy, I had I had hoped Jesus was going to make me happy. Boy, I had hoped Jesus was going to make my life just you know a waltz down easy street, yeah. dancing in the rain. We we do the same thing. We 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 do the same thing. Guilty. We're, 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 yeah, we're we're guilty of that. Boy, I just you know, I just hope that. Um, Jesus was going to come in and just change my life. And by the way, he did. He went to the cross and he came forth from the from the tomb. And we thought, okay, Jesus changed my life. He said, yes. I did. Now get after it. Right, that's right. Get after get it. Get to work. Yeah. Because it's possible now. Well, what do I do? Die to self? Well, no, what, what's the other way? How about I make cookies, you yeah. know, and, 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 and pass those out to, 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 to homeless folks? You know, I, I, I don't want to die to self. I had just hoped that he would come in here and just totally transform my life. And again, I, 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 I kind of facetiously say that. I think Jesus is saying, yeah, I did. Now get after it. Yeah. I talked about in Romans, in, in Romans 6 where, you know, again, it's, it's, it's our baptism that we died with Christ, buried with Christ, raised to live a new life, right? So we'd be forgiven. And then in verse 11, he says, now put to death the sin in your body. Yes. Wait a minute. What was baptism? <laughs> Wait, I thought, I thought this was salvation. I thought Jesus just cleaned it all out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he did. Now you get to work and don't go back to the same way. You you got to clean out all of the junk and the fear and the inadequacies and the sin and the hiding. And you got to deal with yourself. You got to make sure that that's happened. That's, that's the resurrected life. Yeah. So again... One of my mentors loved this statement that um, until you get yourself off of your own hands, you're not going to be able to love or serve another. Very true. And that's my challenge. I can't get myself off my own hands to love and bless and serve and be in community with another. I got all this other junk that I continue to deal with. And I keep praying, boy, I hope Jesus is going to show up today. And, man, he's going to make it all go away and wipe the slate clean. And, and I'm just, you know, again, heading down easy street. Has the old prayer, Jesus come soon? Or is that the, the saying that like, Jesus yeah. hurry up and come soon because yeah. we're in trouble down here? Yeah. Well, you know, Maranatha in, in, in Revelation. You know, come Lord Jesus. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. come Lord Jesus. Hurry up. We need, we yeah, need help. Hurry down up. Here. <laughs> we need help down here. So if we were to die to ourselves because our preconceived view of Jesus that we keep stacking our own views on, does that mean we have to do the same thing to what we view church as? Wow. Now ask that. Uh, add to that. If we were to, because we're, we're stripping off, we're dying to ourselves about the view that we have of Jesus, instead of stacking our, our stuff on top of him that we already have, do we need to do that same thing to, to church? Because like we've talked about in previous episodes, church is different now for everyone. And so a lot of things are open, like uh, boundaries and stuff like that. Do we need to do that with church? And say, hey, we should try to do things differently, or you know, again. So, so let's think about it in a collective context: the church, the local church, dying to self. Yeah. Well, that's painful. Yes, it's going to hurt. We have herded in a lot of sacred cows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. They're all, they're all over the place. We have some uh, some elephants in the room. Yes. You know, every, every church does. Every family does. Every say, person yeah. does. I'm not. We're not just singling out. You ask the question. Oh, say right. Exactly. <laughs> Put it on me. <laughs> so any comments goes to Jeff A. Dare at HeartlandChurch.us. <laughs> uh, if you have any complaints, but that means a church church leadership, a a, a church family, um, in dying to self. 
uh, to, to live the resurrected life means that we have to go through everything and look at ourselves. Why, why are we structured this way? Why do we meet at this particular time? Okay. You know, like on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Why do we have Bible class? Why do we why do we do the format this way? Why do we have the ministries that we have? You know, yeah, I think um, now that and, and, and this is a new term that's coming out, post COVID church. Oh, there you go, yeah. I think it's even more of a reason to look at everything and let those areas die that aren't serving us any longer. Uh, but it starts with, why do I, why am I, why do I go to church? Yeah, there you go. You know, why do I go to worship? What, what am I looking to do? Say, hey, God, I'm here. Give me another gold star, you know, in yeah, my Bible. That's right. You know, I sang loud. I was off key, but I sang loud or, you know, I gave. Right? What is my motivation? And those are challenging questions. Yes, I'll say those kind of hurt now. Yeah, they hurt now. What, what am I doing here? What is my purpose? Yeah. Uh, what am I called to do? Let's just let's just keep it in the assembly. Right? And so the last amen is said. You know, I I sneak in I sneak in late and I leave out early. Right? What what is what is the motivation there? What what am I doing? Uh, I don't I don't want to see anybody. I'm not involved in any ministry. Those questions have to be asked. Yeah. What what are we doing to um, reach people like Jesus did, the outcast. What, what if we focused our ministry in, in, in our area that we would call modern day Galilee? There you go. You know, we, we want to call those people to be our leaders. Whoa. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. You know, that, that might be okay for Jesus because he's a miracle worker, right? right I mean, yeah. he, he knew the end. And so we'll, we'll let him get by with that. He, he called a tax collector to, to be one of his sidekicks. Uh, I, yeah, I'm kind of rambling here, but that, that's a that's a great question. What? How does the church die to yeah. self? Not adding on top of everything else, right? Correct. So, so again, historically, we we just add layers, yeah. layers, 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 and ministries and programs and different ideas. What if we stripped it all away? Hmm. Just laid it down. You know, we're going to start over. Let's go back to Galilee. Yeah. Let's see what Jesus is calling, has called us to be as a church, not only as an individual, not only as a family, but as a congregation, yeah. a collection of saints. That's a great question. I think that is something that we should be thinking about, um, honestly, because um, it's as all of your sermons that have been talking about this have really gotten me thinking about that and how we need to really be thinking about how the church uh, looks going forward. And the first thing that I thought about was the kids in the BAL class on Sunday at Children's Church. We need to be thinking about the church for them, not for us, you and I. Right. We need to be thinking about the church for them. Right. Take that one step further. What about the church universal? You know, again, we're in Kansas City. Right, yep. What about the churches around us Yeah. in working together mm. to, to further the kingdom of God? Oh, what a concept. You know. So, by the way, it's possible. Yes. Uh, when I was in little East Texas, we worked for years to— um, to put that together, and it takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot of um, grace, and it takes a lot of laughter. Well, mm -hmm. you have to learn to laugh at yourself because <laughs> the way other other ministers and other churches see us, and the way we see them, is kind of funny. I mean, uh -huh. you, have, you have to laugh about it, but it absolutely is possible to, to to make a big difference. And out of that movement, and it came. Ultimately, then out of our church came the East Texas Food Bank that's feeding thousands and thousands and thousands of people oh, right now. Awesome. So, yeah, what, 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 about, what about the church universal dying to self yeah. for the sake of this world so that we're not isolated from one another? I think that would be an incredible opportunity. Yes. I think that's something we should be thinking about for sure. So is there anything else that we need to do um, this week? To prepare us for next week, so like kind of a sermon preview for next week. We're gonna. So the one story that I left out Sunday is the the story of what is referred to as the rich young ruler. Okay. And and that's that that it fits with resurrected life. Here's a man that is um, that is cultured, has some wealth. Luke tells us he's he's wealthy. Yeah. He has religion. 
He knows the scriptures. But he comes to Jesus. Now think about it. He kind of has everything together in life. He's got it together. But he wants to know Jesus. How, what do I got to do to inherit eternal life or life forever? Hmm. What, what, what do I have to do? And so they talk religion, and Jesus gives them, well, you know the commandments, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. right? And he says, I've done all that. There's something in this man's soul that says, that isn't enough. Yeah. Having a religious background, knowing the scriptures, not doing the don'ts, Right? Is that how you say it? Yeah, that would be. I'm <laughs> think, not doing that. Everybody think about that one. Not doing the don'ts, <laughs> avoiding, you know, the, 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 the moral trappings. It's not enough. He wants to know what else is there, Jesus. I want to live forever. What else is there? Beautiful story. Yes. So that's, that, that's where we're headed this Sunday. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Uh, again, guys, if you have any questions about uh, Danny's sermon or just questions in general about anything that he's that we're talking about, uh, send them on into hcocdigitalmedia at gmail.com. And, you know, thinking about a few comments ago about how we need to die to ourselves and how we need to th- start thinking about others and all that other stuff. I got a card from you and Mary Ann, and I th- read it. It was beautiful. I just thought to myself, I wish I could do that. Sending a card never crosses my mind. I mean... Zero times a year, <laughs> sending a card to someone is not in my mind. I just yeah. don't have that, and I need to be doing that. So I'm going to start trying to think of things like that to do. Yeah. Those are small so, things. Well, yeah. you know, I've just been writing cards for a long time. It's just kind of part of my ministry, and and, and I love to. Do. That's awesome. I'm not telling the <laughs> truth I can't at all. Keep a straight face. All I. <laughs> All I do is sign my name. Marianne is the card writer and the one who loves to minister to people. So, yes, that's that's her heart, and that's where she excels. So It is an awesome thing. And I, did, I looked at Sarah, and I said, I don't, even, I don't even think about sending a card anytime. For anybody's birthday, either. I'm just like, I don't even think about sending a card. So that that's great. I need to. There's one small thing that I'm going to die to myself. So There you go. But, Dana, that's, I think it's a good time to, to wrap it up. And thank you for the preview for next week. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be out of town <clears throat> next Sunday so I will be on vacation oh. but I'll still be listening don't, okay. don't worry about that so I'm going to be I'll be in bed so will I be interviewing myself next week oh no I'll be back in time for oh, a podcast okay. don't okay. you worry about that oh, okay. um, no week <laughs> I, off for you I <laughs> oh no I can jump seats I guess yeah there you go well alright everybody thank you so much for listening Danny again thank you so much for, for the work you're putting in and, and all the, the thought process and everything it's, thank you. it's really really encouraging thoroughly thank you. enjoy it thank you everybody have a great week